All right, so this is a video on how to punch numbers into your calculator, particularly working with scientific notation. Um, so I'm going to show you a number of different calculators. First off, I just want to talk about the type of calculator that you need for the course. So I state in the syllabus that you need a calculator that's going to be able to work in exponential notation, uh, which is basically our scientific notation, and it also needs to be able to do logarithms. Okay. Logarithms won't come until the, the very end of the quarter. That's in Chapter 10. Um, you don't need to go out and purchase, say, um, a really expensive graphing calculator like this one here. Yes, it's old school. Um, you know, you also have your TI-83s. Okay, you don't need this calculator. If you have one, by all means, use it. Uh, but you don't have to have, you don't have to go and buy a, a $100 calculator to make it through this course. My favorite calculator so far is this, uh, this one here. It comes with one of those little covers on the back. Okay. Um, it's about 20 bucks. You can probably get it on sale for like 10 or 12. There's, it comes in a couple different colors. I've seen hot pink. I've seen gray. Uh, but this is by far my favorite calculator. Uh, another popular calculator among students uh, is this one here. This one usually runs about 10 bucks. Uh, it's not my personal favorite. Um, again, it has the little cover thing on the back. Um, I don't like the keys on it. Uh, that's my own personal preference. And you can't, um, it's very sensitive to how you press the buttons down. Um, so per me personally, I hate the calculator, but a lot of students use it and work just fine for this course that has what you need. Um, what calculator won't work is basically your basic calculators. Hey, okay, this one won't work. It doesn't have the keys that you need. The two keys that you need in a calculator is you need to be able to do some sort of exponent no notation. Um, there are a number of different keys that work. Um, on this one, there's a caret. It's a little triangle button that also has, um, actually has a scientific notation button, which is part of why I love this calculator. Uh, that's a times 10, it has a little N there. Um, the logarithm button that I'm talking about uh, is this log button here. It literally says log L-O-G. Okay. Um, let me show you this other, this blue calculator here. Okay. This one also works. It has that same arrow, the, the caret key. There's also what's called an exponent key. If I can find it, this double E key, it's a capital E. I don't know if you can see it there. But we have, um, there's an X to the negative one button and then as the, the subscript, the second function it has two capital E's there. Um, that is basically your scientific notation button. So you can use that one, okay? And then it also has the log button up in the top left hand. This is a, an older calculator, but I believe still out there. I see it all the time of students. This one works. Uh, it's not quite as user friendly as the other two that I showed you, the blue ones, um, but it does work and it will function and do everything that you need it to. Um, instead of the double E key, it has this EXP, so that's our scientific notation button. And then we also have the logarithms is up at the top there. And like I said earlier, graphing calculator will work. Okay? Um, any graphing calculator will have these functions. It has a log button. It has a caret. Uh, it has the double E key. It has a number of different options for you to plugging numbers in. Okay? All right. So let's start out with how to punch numbers in. I'm going to work with the most difficult calculator first. Okay. So um, basically what I want to show you is I want to show you, um, one, how to plug, plug the numbers in, and two, what those numbers are going to look like uh, when your calculator gives you a scientific notation answer. Okay. So um, one thing to start with, if I want to work with this number here from our Homer or from our lecture examples, okay, to plug in this 1.8 times 10 to the 8, I'm going to use this exp key. This exp key means 
times 10 to the something. Okay, so when I'm plugging this in, I'm going to say 1.8. Now I need to express this times 10, so I'm going to hit the EXP key. So this EXP key means times 10, okay, one button, times 10. And notice that it kind of pops up this little number up in the top right hand. Okay, that's now my exponent, so I'm going to hit 8. And it's probably a little hard to see, but basically it has a 1.8, and then up in the top left hand or top right hand it says 08. So if I hit enter, this is now going to give it to me in standard notation. Uh, and do trust me that it has this 1.8, and then it has what seven zeros afterwards. When you're practicing putting numbers into your calculator, you're, the first values, the, the 1 and the 8, are always going to be there. What's going to change is how many zeros are there. Okay? So you always want to count and double check the zeros. Now, let's show you if I want to put this value here, this 6.0 times 10 to the negative 5. Okay, negatives are tricky, and they differ from calculator to calculator how you plug them in. Okay. For this calculator, you're going to say you're going to put your 6.0. We want times 10, so we have the EXP key. And in this case, we're going to stick the 5 in first, and then hit this plus minus key says that it, that 5 will be a negative 5. So we have 5 and the plus minus key and again you probably can't see it but there is a little negative sign that has shown up in front of that zero five. Okay. So we hit enter. Now in this case the, the calculator is not able to give us this number in standard notation. Instead it kept it in the scientific notation. So when we see this value here we need to be able to know that this is six times ten to the negative five. So again, to plug this number in, if I say 6.0, the EXP key, the 5, and then the plus minus. Now to prove to you that's how your calculator is always going to give that value, okay, if I put it in, in the standard notation, I have 0 0.00006, if I hit enter, it shows it to me in that scientific notation. All right. For using logarithms, we'll talk about that more when we get in Chapter 10. You don't need to know anything about a logarithm. You'll just have to know how to use that button. So don't panic. We can go over that later in the quarter. All right. Our next calculator. Okay. This one here. If we want to, say, plug in our 1.8 times 10 to the 8, okay, we can do two options. We can use our double E key, which again is just like the EXP, so it would be times 10 to the, or we can use the caret key. Okay. I'll show you the double E key. We have 1.8. Okay. I need to use the second function, so I'm going to hit the second button and hit my double E and notice now it puts that capital E there. That capital E means times 10 to the something. So now all I have to do is plug in my something. So I'm going to hit my 8 and hit enter. Okay. So again it shows it to me. It has the 1 and the 8 and then I have seven zeros behind. Okay. To plug in my next value here we have 6.0, second, double E. Now in this case, I want to say negative 5. I'm going to put the negative in first. Okay. And again, you're going to have to play around with your calculator to see what it likes, if it wants the negative first or if it wants the negative second. And in this case, this calculator is able to give us that value in the, the standard notation. Okay. Now, that's one way to use this calculator for scientific notation. This one, because it has a little bit more uh, bells and whistles on it, we have a second option. Okay. If this option works for you, please use it. Okay. This is another option, but you don't want to mix the two. 
Okay. So if we start over, I'm going to use this caret key instead. Okay. The caret key basically just works in an exponent. It doesn't have the times 10 portion. So for this first number, we'd have 1.8. I have to manually put in the times 10. Then I'm going to use the caret key to show, to force that calculator to say, okay, I'm entering now a, an exponent. So I'm going to say times 10 to the 8 and hit enter. If I want this second number, I have 6.0 times 10. Hit my caret key to the negative 5. So those are two different ways to use this calculator. And either or works, it's whatever your preference is. All right, moving on to the next calculator. This is my favorite. And I love it because it has this scientific button already. And it actually kind of displays the scientific notation more of how you write it on the page. So it's a little easier to follow. Okay. So we want to start. We want this 1.8. I'm going to hit my times 10 to the n. Okay, this is basically the equivalent of your EXP or your double E key. It just looks like how you write it. So notice it puts that times 10 in there, and then it puts this little box up there for my exponent. So I'm going to hit my 8. One tricky thing about this calculator is if you needed to plug in more numbers, the cursor is still up there in that exponent, so you just have to hit the arrow key over to make sure that comes down if you want to plug in more numbers. And just one little thing about that. So if we hit Enter... Again, our calculator gives us the 1 and the 8, and we have seven zeros behind it. For the next number, we have 6.0. I hit my times 10 to the n. For this calculator, I'm going to have to hit the negative value first. So I hit negative 5, and I hit enter, and it gives it to me in the standard notation. Again, what I love about this calculator is that it shows you, it looks like the number, how it presents it, is how um, more of how you write it. Okay. Um, I also have the caret key for this calculator. So just like the other blue one, this one has the caret key. So I could do this 6.0 times 10, use the caret key to the negative 5. And notice it looks no different uh, from the, the value that we entered above. Exact same expression, exact same number. It'll get us the exact same value. Now when this calculator, say, uh, represents a number in scientific notation, okay, let's say, uh, let's try the size of an atom. So I'm going to say 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1. Okay. And that's how this is going to express the scientific notation. It's going to look just like how you write it. Um, let's go back. I want to do the same thing with this other blue calculator to show you what it's going to look like. So if we put our size of our atom, we have 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1. This represents it just a little different. Okay, we have the 1, and then down in the bottom there, there's a little times 10, and then we have a negative 10. So let me see if I can bring that up for you. I apologize if that's blurry, but that's how this calculator is going to represent scientific notation. So again, it's good to practice with your calculators um, to, to know what your calculator is going to do and to eliminate your, your input errors, which can be very frustrating. All right, last calculator is a graphing calculator. <clears throat> again, this is kind of old school, yes, I know, um, but they're all relatively the same. Let me zoom out just a little bit. There 
we go. All right, so on this calculator, you have kind of basically the two same options of the previous two calculators. You have your double E key and you have your caret key. Mm -hmm. So we have our 1.8. We can hit the double E key and it gives us the capital E. So remember that that means times 10 to the something. So we'll have 1.8 double E key to the eight and we'll hit enter. We have also, we can do our 6.0, a double E key. In this case, we want our negative first, so negative 5, and hit enter. Notice how this calculator, this is how it's going to represent a scientific notation. It has the 6, the E, and the negative 5. We can do the same thing uh, with our caret here. We can do 6.0, say times 10, because remember we now have to manually enter that in if we're not going to use the double E key. We stick our little caret there, negative 5, and it gives us our same answer. So that's a brief intro to kind of how to use a couple different calculators. Again, this calculator will work, although I don't recommend it. It's just a little too basic um, and it's probably worth um, your level of frustration for the five or so, five or ten extra dollars um, to either purchase uh, this calculator uh, or this one here. Okay. And again, if you have a graphing calculator, go ahead and use it. That will work just fine for this course. Um, but by all means, you do not need to go out and buy a super expensive calculator. Okay? And the most expensive calculator um, you know, that, that I would pay for is this 20 bucks, is this one here. Um, basically, and remember, you need two keys. You need some sort of exponent key, so times 10 to the something. You need this uh, caret key or the EXP or double E key. A number of different options there and you need this log button. Okay. Other than that, everything else that comes on the calculator is just extra bells and whistles.